Hello everyone, um, my name is Hugo Bayer and um, I'd like to show you guys some tips and tricks of the Substance Designer and the way I actually work with the things and I hope you enjoy it and feel free to ask me questions after this tutorial. So let's start a little bit by talking about the, the blend modes, right? And this is more beginner wise, I'm not sure a lot of people ask me oh, how I do this or this mask or how do I create a terrain on top of pebbles and I would like to give you guys that information I feel that uh, it will help some here and there um, I constantly get emails about uh, the videos on YouTube and I appreciate your guys feedback about it um, here's uh, a, a little trick that I use on, on many blends so I have we have the the subtract mode, you have the minimum mode, we have the max mode, all of those guys, but some people don't understand how to use them. And the way I use them is like this. So I create a, let's say, um, let me create a pattern here. Actually, not even pattern, let's, yeah. Let's create a shape. Create a shape and then uh, let me tile this and bring this to be like, kind of like a square. And instead of a square, let's do a brick, okay? And with the brick, I'm just going to use the pattern specific thing, which is probably like a, a slow blur on top of it. Okay, well, anyway, I have the shape, and I want to put this shape like, kind of like it's stones on the floor, right? So what I do is I'm going to use the noise. Let's fake a terrain really quick over here, right? I'm, I'm just going to use a... A purling noise and with the purling noise I'm gonna use a histogram range this is actually the first trick I like to use and a lot of people uh, try to think that oh the contrast or the brightness or anything like that no this this guy is much better for me at least I, I use it constantly and I believe it's much better than a lot of the things that the other notes that you, you just tweak the, the values um, so here's the thing, uh, you have the histogram range, and I'm, I'm just bringing a little, little bit darker. And in this blend, I'm going to put as maximum, right? Actually, I'm done. For now, I'll leave, leave it as copy. So I'm going to put the, the one that is on the bottom, and the one that is on the top. And you can see that if I blend this two, it doesn't help you anyhow. So like if you use a normal map here, and I'm going to bring that normal map to be like 32 you'll see that you are not actually seeing the terrain on the bottom it doesn't give you any chance even if like you go to the histogram range and bring more range it, it's not it's not helping you there like it, it doesn't give you anything good about it um let's just change this a little bit parent specific here okay and i i'll show you guys a trick this is mainly for the beginners a maximum it's whatever actually gives you the sense of something is behind the terrain or not. So you can see now that if I change the terrain and bring it to be a little bit more range or even the position, you can see how the terrain is actually getting into on top of the rock. All right? And this is really cool when you have, let's just say, a variation of color over here. So let me create another pearly noise. I'm going to do a random seed really quick. Create a blend. I'm going to multiply that guy on top of the other one, all right? Well, actually, even a subtract is better, all right? And I'm going to blend these guys together right here. And you can see that now the terrain is completely on top, like, you know, not completely on top, but like going on top of some of the edges. And this is one of the tricks where I like to use is because now I can just keep tweaking this guy and the other one will just always be there, the terrain on the bottom and the, the stones on the top. And I can always, you know, move anything or just create anything. That, that, that it, it's pretty good to use for, like, uh, grout or even, like, dirt, things like that. So this is the first trick I use, and this is one of the reasons why I use Max. Um, and I'll, I'll like to show you guys also the, uh, the, the minimum one, right? So let's uh, just bring this blend right here. I'm going to create another shape. This time let's create, actually not a shape, I'm sorry. Let's create a polygon. Okay. And let's create a polygon with uh, five sides. Okay. And we created a little bit of a curve right there. 
that's good. And the minimum one, I'm going to plug this in here. I'm going to create another with scale, less scale. And I'm going to want to do like a little hole right here on the middle of that shape, right? How do I do that? So I'm just going to invert this guy. I'm going to create an inverted grayscale. And I'm going to bring this down here. But because it's max, it's not creating anything, right? Even copy or overlay, it doesn't matter. It's not going to do anything unless you use the minimum, okay? And this is what the minimum does. I'm going to show you guys with a normal map. I think it's easier to read with a normal map. Put an OpenGL. I'm going to put this one as OpenGL as well later. This normal map, so you can see that now it's, uh, it's kind of creating like a little hole in the middle of it. And if I change the sides or even the size of this, it's kind of like a Boolean on top of things, right? And it, that's a, a really useful tool um, and way of thinking um, in Substance Designer. So, um, and one, one of the things that I love about this is, uh, if, let's say I put a Transformation 2D over here. But I want to click on that guy first. And if I move this, you'll see it's kind of create like that boolean effect on top of things and this is for me is fantastic that's that's how you actually edit high maps right there so this is how i use minimum and uh, another one that i love to use is the subtract right and the subtract i use in many different ways um but i'm going to show you the simpler way to understand this um so i'm going to create a let me think transform now let's create a, a translate, I think, right? Safe transform, there you go. I create a safe transform node, and I'm gonna create another safe transform, just put it right there. But this polygon, I'm gonna put like more sides of, into it, okay? And this one a little bit less. But I want this to be a little bit more offset, all right? So I'm gonna offset this guy a lot, tiny little bit, and this guy tiny a little bit as well but into the opposite side, so, so I've set this guy right there. There you go. And now I'm gonna blend those two with a subtract. It could give you a sensation where, not sensation, I'm sorry, the, 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 word, the right word is actually not sensation. It's, uh, it, will, it will let you do some kind of like shapes of um, rock. And you can see how if I move an offset and even do a rotation or anything like that, this is, this is already being created in a shape. So this is why I feel it's very important to understand those uh, blending modes. So let's put another on the normal map just so you guys can check. And you can see now that you kind of have like a formation of a rock already. And this is a, a really, really good, uh, really good thing to do. Let me just name those guys really quick. Um, so I'm going to use a subtract. This is... Um, This is minimal. Oops, they both perhaps are together. Sorry about that. And then let's name this guy as Max. So um, let's go back to the first one and change this really quick to subtract, for example, right? And you will get this. I mean, yeah, sure, there's a use for this. I, I don't know what it is, it is but um, there is, and you can test it and just play around with it and see how it goes, or even minimum, and you can see that it's a normal map just pretty much just getting smashed by the water, whatever, it's dark there. So if I actually inverted this, scale right there it just gives you a better sense of what's going on right there but since this, this is max I don't want to play around with those let's just leave it as a max for now all right and those are the main blends I use for terrain making or terrain making or shape making or anything like that but the good thing is that there are other little tricks uh, for creating edge uh, masking as well uh, so I'll give you an example, right? So for a lot of people tell me like, oh, but how do I 
masking between the whatever it's already maxed. So that's not that hard. I will explain you know, how. Uh, what you're gonna do is so let me delete this normal map for example, right? And I want to create a mask in between the the rocks that are here and this terrain. So what we're gonna do is let's use this guy right here and use the other one and just create a divide. This is your mask. This is pretty much whatever it's going on over there. Although um, you want to create a, histog a histogram scan and position where exactly where you want it to be. So one of the first points right there, it will be your mask. And as you can see, it just matches. This is another trick for creating the masks in between the two. For the minimum, I, I, you don't need it. The mask is just right there. Um, you just pretty much, you can like just use this guy and create the mask right there. Um, or you, of course, the same thing with divide, so you just go blend. And use this guy on top of this one. Actually, sorry, this one right here, this one right there. And use a divide. And you'll get that white spot. And just use a histogram scan. Use the false position and just go into like 0.99. There you go, that's your mask. That's one of the things that I uh, use a lot as well. Alright, and the subtract. Uh, I never try to do it or think of how to do a mask. I'm sure there's a solution. Um, I don't see the need for it. So, because you already have this guy, so you can do an Instagram in this one as well. So, I don't, I don't really need it. Um, so, I'm not going to even explain that for you guys. Um, uh, and then, all the other blend modes that, you know, we have right here, they also have a use, like the add, which is very common, the multiply, which is extremely common. Um, the switch, uh, yeah, I don't, I rarely use it to be honest with you guys. And the screen overlay, those are mostly for coloring uh, in like little details. Um, so, for example, if I have a cloud, right, and this cloud is right here, I'm just gonna put another noise on top of it, like a BMW, BMW spots. And if you go there and just use overlay very slightly. Actually, not not cloud. I'm sorry. I'm gonna put a curly noise again. It's easier to see. And if I duplicate this normal map and bring it right there, there you have it. So it's just uh, to give a sense of you know a little bit of detail on top of things. The only problem about for me is using overlay is that if there's already something black, you will not you know overlay on top of things. This is why I like to use add right here, which it will give you an overall thing or multiply. So be aware whenever you're using um, a multiply, of course, because it's black, it's not going to do anything. So just use add. Um, just, just be aware where the values are on your things, right? So if you want, if you really want everything to be working with overlay or or add or multiply, make sure that you just use the histogram range. And the histogram range just don't go entirely until like one. Leave the position of 0.5. That way, the values that you have for this thing are different than the values that you have for that. So you, you still have a little bit of room for for other pixels to come in in there. Um, and this is why now, like for example, this will work with add or overlay or anything like that. Screen doesn't work because it's different, but. Uh, and I can use just change the range, and you'll see that an overlay just starts working in there. So be aware that there is a maximum and minimum on a high range of a of a, of a high map. So this is actually what I'm using this for. Add linear, okay. Just create a frame, put an add, and um, uh. Another thing that I will, I love to show people like uh, how to use the is uh, it's the, the slow blur. Um, people get really impressed by how easy it is to to do that. Um, so I'm gonna put like a shape, and I'm gonna use a bell. Bell's fine, and 
the first thing about this low blur, right? It it pretty much say, does whatever it is telling you. It's it's gonna try as best from the high top of the high map and then bring it down from the slope. Okay. So if I use this low blur here, okay, and then I do the connection of the source. If you look at it, and I do use the intensity, it's just making that go and push the white spots go into the darkness okay so if I have let's say I have instead of that uh, I'm gonna put like a yeah probably void it's better and if I want to differentiate the shape of this I'll put the size a little bit smaller just so can, yeah, people can see you can see that the difference in between the normal map of this guy and that other one Okay, it's very different right there because it's just you know pushing those pixels outside and that's very important so um, another trick about the slope blur, blur is actually using um, the another noise so let's put it like a cloud for example actually not this one is too noisy let's use cloud 2 and this low blur just pretty much creates that effect right there. Of course, you don't want too much uh, too much intensity on it. So let me use a histogram scan right here, for example. Let me put the position right there at the top. And you can see now that it's just breaking the edges with with that noise right there. So that cloud. And since you 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 might not want it too much, right? So you wanna. Uh, blur a little bit. I don't like to use the regular blur, so I'm gonna use the blur high quality. And you can see now that I, I still have, and still happening, is just very invisible for you, even unless I do the intensity right there. So you can create different shapes and different forms, and if the less your blur is just gonna, you know, all those things are extremely useful. Um, and I encourage you guys to just keep trying and playing around with those things. And you can see that now, like I just have a lot of different kind of rock right there. See, it's kind of a weird glob blobby shape. But um, you know, that's that's why I use the slow blur a lot. Too. So just play around with the, the node is fantastic. And um uh, another one that I like to use is actually the. Let me use some other one here. So it's a non-uniform blur. So I like to use that a lot. And why? Because you can create so much things from it. Um, so if I bring those two guys together, right, and I use the intensity with a bunch of blades, you'll see what it does. It's try. It tries to blur whatever it's white pretty much on the mask. That's what it does. And for me, that is extremely useful. Why? Because I can create like uh, cobblestones or even stones on the floor. It, it breaks that you want it to be a little bit like uh, more um, uh, rounded shape and you have the layout for it, it just works. So for example, if I bring another shape here, right? And I have the size to be this way. If I have that tiling, that way I can just go and use that on the non-uniform blur and there you have it it just gives you that nice uh, uh, you know blobbiness on top of things a little trick here just so for other people to to see what I also like to think about is like for example if I want to blur right and I do a histogram scan of this guy and put the position up like this and do the contrast you will get that edging right there. So you can see that you're changing the shape and you're making a very nice uh, border edge. But if you use this guy, okay, let me use this guy and put like a, a blur in a, a, a high quality blur, and just delete this one, actually, just use this guy here, uh, you will see that this will go around it. So it's uh, those are the tricks and things that just you know make you a little bit more useful in um, substance designer and just you can play with those things and just gives you a huge uh, comfort with, with playing with those nodes and just you go forward you just 
you just keep making uh, textures here and there. So um, those are my tips for the day, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Please, if you have any questions, just let me know. I hope you um, you you uh, like my video, and uh, if you get you guys want to know anybody about anything else, just uh, keep me informed. All right. Thank you so much, and uh, have fun.